Salutations and welcome to Serafina Sephora Says. Today we will continue with the notorious misadventures of Primrose Goodwing in Iffy Magic Chapter 16, Charmed. Yellow petals exploded upwards as the gazebo landed in a garden in the inner court, squashing a bed of tulips flat. Sweet Vetch batted the petals away as she regarded us through narrowed eyes. I don't have time to play dungeon master, but I can't have you two trying to escape or some such nonsense. She waved her wand and our gossamer binding snapped as the gazebo dissolved in a billow of scarlet vapors. My eyes shut against the stinging smoke, but I opened them as my coughs echoed in my ears. I was floating in the middle of a glass bobble, cupped in Ember's hands, but it might as well have been an iron-walled prison. I'd be slowly crushed to death if Ember's grip on the idler's glass slipped even once. Of course, Sweet Vetch wrapped Ember's wrist with her wand. Nice. Drop that orb and it will shrink until it's the size of a sand grain. Drop it. Sweet Vetch paused, and I rolled my eyes as I waited for her melodramatic finish. And I'll set you free. I gulped at her unexpectedly generous offer. Only fools bargain with hags, Ember snapped, her fingers forming a delicate cage around my orb. Sweet Vetch shrugged. Suit yourself. She prodded Ember forward down a winding cobblestone path. The path opened onto a terrace, and Ember's breath caught as she noticed Lance devouring a basket full of blueberry crumpets on a stone bench, barely five feet away. I bounced off the sides of my orb as she rushed forward to stand beside him. Lance, I'm much relieved you're not a mouse, but why? Lance jerked away from her. Have we met? He asked doubtfully. Ember's breath caught, the tips of her fingers pressing white against my glass. Silly, it's me, Ember. Well, you knew me as Cinderella, but... Go away, Lance mumbled through a large bite of blueberry crumpet. That did it. Ember's hands held me, but her feet were free. She kicked the basket from his lap. Don't you dare ignore me. What's wrong with you? You're the only thing that's wrong here, Lance grimaced. The grotesque angles of your face are giving me a severe headache. Tell me, did lightning strike your cradle? No doubt she was born deformed, a breathy voice said. Ember stiffened as four guards filed from the castle. The guards parted as a girl with hair like frosted gold glided to Sweet Vetch's side. Bah, I should have known the Whisper Witch wouldn't be far off. Vasilisa flipped her wrist at the guards. Leave us. I will attend to our guests. Yes, milady, the lead guard said in a tone that reeked of utmost reverence. Ember stifled a laugh as the guards bowed before, retreating from the courtyard. Vasilisa can hardly be Queen of Lindenburg already, could she? Where there's a wand, there's a way, I muttered. Judging by the spell-glazed look on Lance's face, I wasn't holding out much hope. Vasa, my fair Lisa! Lance jumped to his feet and moved towards the pale girl. I waited half the morning for you to join me for breakfast, but you never came. Sit, Vasilisa said. Lance fell back onto his seat, his expression thoroughly dejected. Poor mortal, the strength of the charm on him must be nauseating. Since when do you take orders from that blonde snippet, Ember demanded. Oh, he'll do anything for a family, Sweet Vetch said, mussing Lance's hair as she would a pet. Haven't you heard? Vasilisa flashed a moonstone ring the size of a robin's egg in Ember's face. The prince proposed to me last night amid the ruins of the chandelier. Bother. No doubt Sweet Vetch had already charmed every royal kinsman in the castle to slobber after Vasilisa's mere shadow, too. Lance leapt to his feet again. Yes, the jubilant moment is forever emblazoned on my... I said sit, Vasilisa snapped. Sweet Vetch chuckled as Lance obeyed like a whipped hound healing to its master. Adorable, isn't he? But I have an even better wedding present. I blinked against the prismatic glare as she drew out Ember's slippers from the folds of her gown. I couldn't help but sigh as she set them on the flagstones. It was a shame that my only magical creation to survive midnight now belonged to nefarious villains. Vasilisa's eyes lit up, but she glanced away from the slippers as if they were cheap reed sandals. They'll do, I suppose. She flinched as the point of Sweet Vetch's wand pricked her neck. They'd better, Sweet Vetch snapped, especially after all the trouble I went through to acquire them. 
Her wand dropped to her side as she yawned. I suppose I should call Dorotura and McCoy off their ridiculous unicorn hunt. I've let them sweat in the green world long enough. No doubt that doddering beast and mangy cat boy will storm the castle before luncheon to rescue their precious damsels. Vasilisa giggled. Dear Calico, I think I'll keep him in the royal menagerie this time. Leave him out of this, I demanded, pounding my fist against the orb. Big mistake. The force rebounded, and Ember nearly dropped the idler glass as I slammed against the side. Sweet Vetch waved her wand with an impatient flick. See to their accommodations, girl. I'll be in the tower if you dare bother me with one more request for jewels or finery the rest of the day. You'll wear chambermaid's rags for a week. Vasilisa stuck out her tongue as Sweet Vetch vanished in a puff of rolling ruby smoke. I won't need you forever, freak, she whispered. Clearly, there was no love or loyalty lost between the pair. They made a mockery of the bond between human venture and fairy godmother. Vasilisa wasted no time in kicking off her shoes. Her feet were slender and small, but the instant her toes touched Ember's slippers, the glass morphed into misshapen chunks. The slippers flowed back into their proper shape only after she moved her foot away. Could the magic inside the slippers have imprinted on Ember's life essence, I wondered? But that sort of advanced glamour required a lot more squill with a wand than I had. Then again, it was Rosebud's wand that completed the spell, not mine, not me. Vasilisa smiled demurely at Ember. Cinderella, you really must share your secret. How does one put these on? Usually one foot at a time, but maybe that's just me, Ember quipped. I stifled a laugh, but Ember flinched as Vasilisa's slap raked her cheek. Helplessness washed through me as I counted the raw red lines left by Vasilisa's nails. Ember couldn't defend herself as long as she held my stupid idler's glass. Vasilisa gave Ember a wide-eyed stare as she daintily shook her hand. Ooh, look what you made me do. That hurt. Tell me how to make the slippers mine, and perhaps I won't make you say you're sorry. Get a better fairy godmother, Ember said. Don't play games with me, Vasilisa hissed. I always win. If I can't wear them, why then? No one will. I squinted as prisms flared as she hurled the slippers against the garden wall. They chimed in protestation before rolling to a stop on the flagstones. Vasilisa tried again with the same result. Her fists clenched as she stomped her feet like toddling child. Break, why won't you? Goldfish scattered as Vasilisa flung the slippers into the same shallow pond where Lance and Ember had thrown their lots together last evening. Worthless shard, she seethed. The sudden splash seemed to excite Lance out of his stupor. He jumped to his feet and grabbed Vasilisa in a tight embrace, kissing her full on the lips. I started as Ember sucked in her breath as if she'd been stung by a hornet. Why Ember should have any strong feelings on the matter was beyond me. After all, she'd smacked Lance head over heels when he'd tried to kiss her last night. My treasure, Lance murmured. Why must you torment me? These fits of violence bring out your radiance full force. Tonight, my sweet, Vasilisa grimaced, pushing Lance away as if he were a rabid mutt rather than her sweet. Release the charm on Lance before it burns up his mind, I demanded. Are you truly so vain that you need every man in the castle slobbering after you? I believe you had your heart set on a different fellow altogether last night, Ember added, or did you get confused? Vasilisa raised her hands as if she would very much like to throttle Ember. But then her fingers twitched and she dropped her arms back to her sides. You're the ones who are confused, she said in a wisping lilt. Guards! She snapped her fingers and Ember nearly dropped me as two men came up behind her and seized her elbows. Please give Cinderella and her fairy godmother a private audience with Cheval. The blasted orb bounced me in circles as the guards dragged Ember down a corridor that was surprisingly clean and well ventilated, considering where it led, the dungeons. They opened a heavy wooden door and shoved Ember forward. She tripped into a bed of straw and just barely managed to keep me aloft, but at the price of skidding her elbows. Scrambling up, Ember kicked the door with her bare feet. Let us out! Am I the only one who can tell that Vasilisa has bewitched, befuddled, but... Do stop yelling, I uh, beg or beseech you, a man's voice pleaded behind her. I have a headache roughly the size of the Kashmara Sea. Ember whirled around, and I slammed face first into the glass. Ouch! 
Prince Fitzwilliam? she asked. The prince huddled in the darkest corner of the dungeon. He cut quite possibly the most dejected figure I'd ever seen. His crown was gone, glittering waistcoat soiled, and cravat limp as a wet dish rag. Wrong prince. I'm just the prince of fools, he said. The name's Cheval, Lancelot Chev. Impossible, I interrupted. But I spoke with Lance only a moment ago, Ember added. That would be the real Prince Fitzwilliam Dove, the young man smiled. And I had to admit that there was an exceptionally strong resemblance, sir, minus the ink stains. The royal switcheroo was all Liam's idea, Cheval said. Half of Holtenburg thought we were twins already, and nobody at Lindenburg's court had seen him for seven years. He whirled a cracked monocle around his finger before letting it smash against the wall in a shower of tiny pink sapphires. The plan was supposed to be simple. I got to play the pampered royal, while Liam got to nose around Lindenburg without being mobbed by the usual pack of damsels. Personally, I like being mobbed by damsels, but I guess that's what landed me here. Sweet Basil, I couldn't believe I'd almost sabotaged my own princess scenario. I really was a wretched excuse for a fairy godmother. I tried to imagine the disheveled young man I thought was Lance as Prince Fitzwilliam. Totally failed. Spectacles and sneezes were not the usual hallmarks of a royal heir, were they? Cheval groaned as he rubbed his temples. Liam warned me to steer clear of the punch bowl. I have a tendency to go overboard and get lost at sea when it comes to the bubbly if you catch my drift. He squinted at me. I say, by chance, is there a little person in your bobble or am I still drunk? Ember rested my orb on her knees as she slouched against the opposite wall. The answer is yes on both counts. My turn. How'd you end up in here? Dunno, he sighed. I was fairly sloshed when that sultry minx Visa Lisa, or whatever her name was, shoved the most peculiar apple into my hands. The fruit skin gleamed like pure carrot gold. I bit my lip. Sweet Vetch must have given Vasilisa a lovesick apple to tame the prince's heart. The pocketbook strictly forbade the charmed fruits, but I didn't think Sweet Vetch bothered studying hers, ever. Cheval grimaced, Vasalinda started babbling about our imminent marriage, and I might have said true love would have to be our bread and butter, as my coin Porsche was a lot lighter than Liam's. He hung his head between his knees. She went rabbit after that. Crazy wrench snatched the apple back and started smashing goblets on my head. Ember's voice was steady, but her pulse trembled against my idler's glass. The prince is already hers. Nobody can stop her from catching GMR now, or she paused. Calico isn't just a cat, is he? The phrase, just a cat, brought me back to the wild grove where I'd first met Calico's smoldering gaze in the dark. I'd never let Vasilisa hurt him again. No, I said, no more than weird unicorn bait. So maybe I'd lost both wings and wand. I still had an ember, the prince's second cousin, and a plan. Can you stand, I asked Cheval, hopefully. I suspect there's a magic bean in my friend's pocket. I need you to plant it in the middle of our cell. Can I stand, Cheval scoffed. I will not be underestimated by a tiny person. He rose unsteadily and wobbled towards us. Uh, Prim, exactly how is a dungeon garden going to help us, Ember asked. You'll see, I said, trying to project firmness and nerve and watch out, I warned. Ember raised my orb overhead as Cheval bumped into her shoulder. His cheeks flushed as he fumbled in her pocket and dropped the bean at her feet. My pardon, milady. My eyes traced the imprint of a curse of G as he reached for the snow white bean. It was definitely of Goodwing stock, but the emblem was an old Avalonian style, not used for generations. Perhaps an 80s had dueled rosebud for the bean and long centuries lost? I only hoped the bean wasn't too old to sprout. I held my breath as Cheval dug a small hole in the ground and piled dirt and straw over the bean. Nothing happened. Perhaps the bean means water, Ember asked? No, fire, I said, snapping my fingers. Of course, since the bean had lain dormant for so long, likely only heat would crack its shell now. Maybe my mother can help us. Just this once, Ember said quietly. She shook her head and a sliver of wood slipped from behind her left ear. The last match of Lady Ash. Ember must have stolen it at the gazebo. I'd never been so proud of my human venture. Not that she was ever truly mine. Cheval struck the final gift of Ember's mother against the wall and dropped the flaming sliver over the straw mound. The two leaned over the burning mound expectantly. Move away, I warned. Too late. A thunderclap exploded inside our cell as thick green vines shot upwards and rammed into the ceiling. 
Only the tips of Ember's fingers held my orb as she reeled backwards. Dust and timbers rained down as the beanstalk punched straight through and slithered upwards in serpentine ropes. Shafal whistled as he pulled straw from his hair. Miniature damsels, magic beans, I know I should wake up, but I can't. You'll get used to it, Ember assured him. I rolled my eyes. Would you escort us up to the beanstalk, sir? My friend's hands are full. Cheval shrugged as if it were a common request to escort a lady up a monstrous enchanted legume. My pleasure. We were only one tantalizing foot from the hole in the ceiling when two guards charged into the cell. A hand seized Ember's ankle and yanked down hard. Milky liquid ran over Cheval's fingers as he dug his fingers into the vines to keep her from slipping. Sir, unhand the lady. Cheval fell from the beanstalk and crashed on top of the guard. Go on, I'll be fine, he shouted, as he punched the second guard. If there's one thing I'm good at, it's disorderly conduct. I believed him. Just one more step, I urged Ember, as she struggled to keep her balance. But my own body somersaulted as two large hands wrenched the idler's glass away from her, pulling me up through the hole in the ceiling. Cracks splayed across the surface as the orb started shrinking. Just sparkly. I now had less than three minutes before the orb crushed me to pixie grits. The man who should have been King of Lindenburg smashed his face against the glass orb. With his strong build and aquiline nose, Harold Bonaventure would have had a regal bearing if his crown weren't upside down, iron gray beard snarled as a bush, and shirt buttons askew by five. Ember climbed through the splintered floorboards. Give that back, er, your majesty, she pleaded, curtsying once before rushing towards him. Rat catcher, King Harold taunted, evading her as a vine tendril snaked between them. Goose feathers popped free from his mattress as he jumped onto his bed. You shall not take me alive. A Bonaventure never surrenders his cutlery. My stomach churned as King Harold juggled the orb in the air, but it was the fairy lens of second sight that made me queasiest. I could see an indigo serpent twisting around his neck. Hex lines bound Lindenberg's monarch more tightly than my own prison. Get us to the garden, I shouted over his rants. The king is cursed, not mad, but your slippers should be able to shatter the spells on both of us. Her glass slippers had easily broken the knave charm on Ambrose's garnet cufflinks, after all, but whether their magic could break the king and I free was a fool's gamble, the only kind we had left. King Harold was surprisingly docile as Ember repelled him out of his bedchambers, but he obstinately clutched my idler's glass against his chest. Twice, Ember ducked behind his broad soldiers as soldiers raced down the short corridor. Yet no one stopped us. The royal guards were too busy hacking the vines besieging the castle. Keen satisfaction filled me as I glimpsed sweet vetch tangled in the bean's tendrils, ruby darts of magic spilling uselessly off the leaves as she wrestled to free herself. Ha! Legamon Monstrum was the hardiest bean in the Goodwing Garden. Our luck held out until we reached the lily-filled pond in the garden. None too soon. Already, my shoulders buckled against the idler's glass. The slippers still lay submerged in the shallow mirror like a pair of drowned stars. Ember's fingers brushed the water just barely. I meant to cry out, but the whisper witch was faster. Vasilisa darted from a lilac grove and yanked Ember to the ground by her hair. Vasilisa stood over her, arms akimbo. You should have stayed in the dungeon, Cinderella. You're right, Ember said. The view is better. She hooked her leg over Vasilisa's and knocked her to the flagstones, but the pale girl writhed and slashed like a feral cat. I winced as blood spurted from Ember's nose after a particularly nasty right hook. Vasilisa grabbed a marble gargoyle beside the pond and raised it over her head. I told you, she said, I always win. No, I screamed, even as the idler's glass forced me to my knees. The world spun as King Harold pitched me forward. My oar ricocheted off Vasilisa's head and landed in the pond, bobbing wildly. Vasilisa staggered backwards under the weight of the gargoyle, tripped over a chrysanthemum bush, and smashed into a conveniently placed bird fountain. I decided it was my favorite corner of the courtyard. There was a bee, King Harold said, peering nervously between hollyhocks at the unconscious girl. I think you squashed it, your highness, Ember reassured him, as she fished my orb and her slippers from the water. Hurry, I panted. The idler's glass pressed the breath from my chest. I wasn't sure I could pull another in. Forgive me, Ember said, screwing her eyes shut. The slippers flared with milky white radiance as her foot slammed down on top of me. For a second, I thought something burned against my chest with matching radiance. My burst star? But both lights flickered out as the idler's glass popped like a flimsy soap bubble. 
Thanks, I said, greedily gulping the air. Ember didn't answer, as the halo cast by her slippers revealed the purple phantom of silk and snake writhing around King's Herald in a hypnotic knot. Hold very, very still, she commanded. Lunging forward, she yanked the serpent sash from the king's neck. The indigo hex coiled in her grip, but the second she snapped its head, the magic dissolved. My jaw dropped. I could barely handle a hex like that with my wand. She had just destroyed it with her bare hands. The slippers channeled wild surges of magic through Ember, or maybe it was the other way around? King Harold grabbed both of Ember's hands in his own and squeezed them tightly. Seven years, he said. Seven years I've waited for someone to break my shackles, but no mortal has ever seen or touched the snake scales. His voice came out in a hoarse whisper, but I could hear a power and will behind it that was new. How did you do it, girl? he demanded. I didn't, sire. Ember lifted me onto her palm. We did it, she said, but our introduction was rudely interrupted by Lance's, no, the true Fitzwilliam's cry. Vasa, my darling, Liam stumbled to the grass beside Vasilisa's prone body. I will impale myself on my sword if you don't wake from this accursed slumber, he said, cradling her in his arms. Wake, or I shall drop the portcullis on my head. I'll drop it on your princely head if you don't quit mooning over that asp, Ember growled. And now, a word from this week's sponsor. Grumpy apple, not to be confused with the common garden variety crab apple. If your human venture has fallen under a lovesick charm, simply give them one bite of our grum fruit and they will revert to their usual state of existential melancholia. Side effects may include a sudden desire to become a philosophy major. And now, where were we? Don't tell me this twit is my son, King Harold asked in dismay as he righted his upside down crown. I'm afraid so, but he's merely lovesick, I said. The prince ate something disagreeable of the enchanted apple variety. Oh, is that all, the king said, looking much relieved. And here I was worried that the sole heir to Lindenburg was a natural-born nincompoop. The prince's gaze flicks to Ember, and pure hatred crystallized in his eyes. Liam dropped Vasilis to the ground as he rose and unsheathed his sword. I shall rend you limb from limb for dishonoring my queen. He charged Ember with his blade swinging wildly overhead. How I envied gnats at this moment. At least they had wings. Ember dumped me on a lily pad as she sidestepped the prince. Grabbing his sword arm, she twisted it behind his back. I sniffed. This was the closest she'd ever come to dancing. Too bad her dance partner wanted to kill her. Release me, vile wench, Liam spat. Ember twirled the prince around and punched him in the stomach. That's for calling me a wench and maybe for the kiss wasted on Vasilisa? But I kept that thought to myself. The prince doubled over and coughed. A small chunk of golden apple shot from his mouth and hit the ground. Liam rose with a shuddering sigh. You have no idea how excruciating the last few hours have been for me. It seems I owe you my life again, Cinderella. Hmm, maybe tiaras weren't out of her future after all. Ember pulled his bent spectacles from her pocket and held them out like a dead newt. That's Ember to you, your majesty, she said coldly. I slapped my head, definitely out. Liam seized her hand as she brushed past him. Come now, you must know that the ruse was for my own protection. The instant Vasilisa realized Cheval wasn't the true prince, she threatened to slit his throat until I bit her wretched apple. Ember pulled her hand free and folded her arms. I helped you break into a wizard's tower last night, and you never even told me your real name. Neither did you, Liam shot back. I sighed. Mortal flirtation was such an overly complicated exercise. A loud belly laugh interrupted their quarrel. Children, kiss now. Fight later. We have work to do, King Harold said. I most certainly will not, Ember said, a blush storming her cheeks. Liam's jaw dropped as he turned around and faced the king for the first time. Father, you're never better, my boy, King Harold said softly. Dual flickers of pain and pride passed across his face as his son kneeled before his feet. It was many years before I first doubted your madness, Liam said, but I couldn't let anyone know that I suspected you'd been cursed until I found the caster. He bowed his head. Can you forgive me for deserting you, father? There is nothing to forgive, King Harold said. His tone hardened. My revenge belongs to McCoy. Follow me. I have a spider to squash. 
The king charged through an archway into the palace. Ember plucked me from the lily pad and hurried after him. King Harold confronted a squadron of guards hacking the beanstalk. Clapping his hand on the shoulder of the mustachioed little man I'd met the evening before. Captain Merritt, order your men to cease pruning. To the armory at once, he cried. We must raise McCoy's tower to the ground, post haste. We'll get right on it, your highness, the captain said, mopping his brow. Now, why don't you go play with your chess set and let us finish our work? He shook the king's hand off. What part of post haste don't you understand, King Harold growled, as his face reddened with rising temper. Liam tapped him on the shoulder. Pardon me, father, but they still believe you're mad. Flying the coop, your majesty, a contemptuous voice interrupted. Naughty, naughty. A cord of violet magic blasted us from behind and whipped me to the marble tiles. I shielded my eyes as ember slippers flared in a bright pearl sphere. The glow died down and I was dismayed to discover that ember was now the only human present. A flock of squawking chickens was all that was left of the guards and royal family. The elf with the indigo smile strode down the hallway toward us. McCloy glided just behind Artura. A slight frown tugged at the wizard lips as he dusted stray leaves from his sleeves and surveyed the beanstalk's progress up his tower. Clearly, McCoy hadn't expected to return from unicorn hunting in the Greenwald to find a giant beanstalk devouring his home. Not one step closer, Ember warned. She picked up one of the guard's fallen swords and struggled to brandish the heavy blade in front of her. At least she had a sword. Me? I was a wingless five-inch wonder without even a toothpick to flaunt. You mortals are as irritating as you are predictable, Dartour said as he kicked a chicken aside. We can't leave you alone for more than an hour before you start hatching ridiculous schemes to control your miserable little lives. Indigo light flared in his palm, but McCoy placed a restraining hand on the elf's arm. Allow me. He tossed a white thistle at Ember's feet. Tend to your chickens, girl. That's much closer to your skill set, I think. The thistle rooted in the marble tiles and sprouted into a nine-foot-tall thicket that divided me from Ember. Botany? Not my specialty at Meadowlark. But thanks to Star Tulip's babbling about the enchanted plant she wanted for her perfumery, I knew exactly how dangerous this briar cage was. Don't use your slippers, I shouted. Moon thistle only grows stronger with magic. I cringed as chickens screamed inside the thicket as their wings snagged on the thorns. The hack of Ember's sword rang through the briars, but I knew she was truly trapped this time. I glanced up as McCoy loomed over me like a shadow within a shadow, barely visible in his black velvet jacket. Miss Goodwing, McCoy said warmly, I can't tell you how pleased I am that you decided to rejoin us. His lips smiled, but his green eyes were harder than twin emeralds as he reached down and snared me in the slender cage of his fingers. His other hand smashed a fluxy leaf in his palm. Thank you for listening, my cyber minions. Until next week, Tira Lira.